and welcome back now today we have a very technical device on my workbench as you can see it's a transistor and an led yeah not exactly the pinnacle of technology is it but there's a reason for that so bear with me so led being driven by a transistor and a little limiting resistor there and then this device here this is an opto interrupter i guess there's other names for it but basically there's a light beam being passed from one of these towers to the other and if you interrupt it like if i've put my pointer in the middle you'll see the led go out that's quite sensitive so i've actually got to break the beam in fact let's use this um this header here it's probably easier to see there we are so i've interrupted it and the light goes out and as soon as it restores it goes back on again now you could use this and it, maybe it's even designed for this i don't know for counting things as they whiz through a conveyor belt it's quite sensitive so if you had a thousand boxes coming through maybe amazon have got them on their workbenches i don't know but anyway that's that's what this does um and and that's really it i mean basically what you've got on here is a an led on one peg if you like let's, let's rip it off the workbench get a closer view. in fact i'll tell you what we'll do we'll have a little word from our sponsors first before we continue I just wanted to mention my sponsor this week. It's China's leading electronics components distributor, LCSC Electronics. From their warehouses in Shenzhen, China, and with more Asian brands and lower prices, they can pick and ship our orders in just four hours. And all their components are sourced from authorized distributors or directly from their Asian suppliers at very competitive prices. And if you have many components to buy, you can import your bill of materials, BOM file, directly into their website. Try it now. Let's rip it off the workbench, get a closer view. So you've got, uh, in one side you've got an LED, probably not that one, it's probably that side there, it's difficult to tell quite frankly. One's an LED emitting probably infrared, might be ultraviolet like though, we'll have a check on the data sheet. And one's an opto transistor that receives that light. And basically the the opto transistor, well it's a bit more than that, just a transistor actually, it's a sort of an IC really built into the actual device itself. But basically it receives the light, cleans it up a bit, formats it, you know, and has a nice clean break so that when you switch it off, it really does switch off and then back on again, nice clean pulses you can get as you can see from the LED. Fine. Great, you say. How does this really help? And what's that other thing on the on the breadboard there? Well, that is an AT Tiny 85 that may well come into use in this project, as might this Wemos D1. Even if it's not this actual sized board, I could easily plug in something like that. So what's this all about? Well, the problem is this. I have a workshop, as you know, I'm recording in it at this very minute. It has a master kill switch by the door so that as I leave um, well let me just show you the actual process of what happens as I leave the workshop and you'll get a better idea so this is the door to my workshop and as I exit I approach this door and here you can see the master kill switch that one there and the light switch so when I exit I'm supposed to kill the master switch here which cuts down all the power to uh, well most things in my workshop not everything the PC stay on for example and then I can touch this switch here, except I tend to use Alexa these days. Now you can see what the problem is. Watch what happens. Alexa, turn off workshop lights. Okay. So the lights have gone off and, well, frankly, the workshop appears to be sort of pretty much dead now. So what happens is I then forget to kill this now, exit the workshop, close the door, lock it up, and the power stays on, which is, of course, quite dangerous. OK, you've seen what the problem is then on exiting, but uh, when I'm outside and I lock the door, what happens exactly? Well, let me lock the door from the inside, and you'll see now, with the implementation of, well, something like this, exactly what happens. So I close the door from outside now, put the key in the lock, and if I try to lock the door now with the power still on, which you can see by that neon up there, look what happens. Whoa, big alarm. That's what I need. Cool. Let's see how I achieved all this. So you can sort of see where I was coming from, really. I was hoping that that would fit inside the lock and uh, the lock itself would fit in that gap. Life is never that easy, is it? So no, that just wasn't going to work. I mean, I, I fiddled about, but it just wasn't going to work. 
So this is the door lock from the outside. If I open that up, you'll see the bit that comes out. And then I was hoping that that would actually slot in there. But as you can see, far too big. It's just never going to go through. And on the receiving side of this, the, the brass slot, the catch that that's supposed to go into, we have a similar problem. So on this side, I was hoping that this might actually fit in there. As you can see, it's too wide. There is a bit of a lip on here, um, but even inside that lip, it just isn't going to work. Anyway, and that slot's too small anyway. So, we had to think again. So I thought, well, what would I do if I didn't have this actual device then? The answer would be have an LED and some kind of photoreceptor on that lock, probably on the outside. So guess what? Yes, I, um, I cut this basically with a very sharp knife. So um, you can see where the leads come out the three leads here that's the that's the photoreceptor side and the two leads is a simple led so basically i cut that down the side and well i've actually got a bit of video to show you that so obviously i didn't want the leads to short together so i put some heat shrink tubing over each of the legs pushed it up as far as it will go the side that's open to us now is going to be the one that's face down on that lock now it's a trusty dremel um, heat gun here just to uh, shrink that tubing it's quite difficult to do it in one hand i'm holding the phone with one hand trying to see what i'm doing with the other anyway that was fairly straightforward and i've done this for both parts putting on the heat shrink and um yeah that, well, that's that's fine it's not going to short out at all right so both things are soldered up now as you can see here this all simple stuff now this is the actual catch so that's the catch that goes on the door frame you'll see that in a minute and the lock goes into that central hole obviously goes into here so what i've got to do is drill a hole on either side one this side and on this side you see where i've actually marked out the general position of where the lock goes into it doesn't go into it that far i might add so i'm gonna to have to position these pretty close to the leading edge drill a hole either side so that the light goes through and uh, glue it all up and then connect it back up to i think the original board why not and it's just um three wires i might even use more of that um servo wire to bring it out but we'll see we'll see and um well hopefully that'll be all good and then of course i've got to make the actual hole where this goes into the door frame a little bit wider because then the bit's sticking on the outside so i'll just slot that in but i'll show you that when i get to it right i've got to drill that's a four millimeter hole here i've already drilled a pilot hole one millimeter Hard going. Right, that's that one done. Now I've got to do on the other side exactly the same. Okay, it's drilled now. Uh, there's one hole, there's the other. What I did, I drilled the first hole first and then shone a torch down there to see where it was going to come out this side and just made a little pilot hole through this to make sure it all lined up okay. Because on this side, as you can see, it's curved looked. So I couldn't get a drill in from this side at all. So, okay, that's all that done. Now I've got to glue them on, the um, sensors, and then wire it up to the little circuit board, which might be a bit more difficult than I thought, because obviously they're not header pin size holes, they're just component size holes. Pretty small. We shall see. Right, let's have a look at that uh, door jam. Now, as you can see here, um, and this was fairly generous to begin with, but I've just made it a little bit more generous there at the back. Um, this bit here has been taken out, and I made sure that bit there was nice and flush. And that's that's probably about all I've had to do. And um, I'm pleased to report now that this does, in this state, actually fit in there rather well. So I'm not going to put it in just yet, because now I've got to figure out where the wires are going to come out of here, through this wall somewhere. And then, well, presumably towards the back of the workbench so you can't see them, and then we'll decide how to terminate. Hmm. Okay, we have some sort of success here. Um, I've drilled the hole through at the top there. You can see where this DuPont cable is going through. Not that I'm going to leave a DuPont cable in there. Um, so that's going through there, and it comes out the other side of the wall just here. Okay, that's not the tidiest exit hole I've ever seen in my life, but it is right at the end of the workbench. And in fact, you see this little gap here at the end, where I put my finger down, that's because I moved this up when it was first built. 
and I never did fill this well now there's a good reason to fill it once I get all this done so what I want to do is put the um, probably this wire this uh, servo wire through there I can then route that up in that gap you see there look and come out here put it into some sort of fixture um, and uh, yeah it should be quite neat okay well I'm gonna get on and do that and then final test I suppose right so it's all connected up so I've actually soldered these wires onto that header I wasn't prepared to use something like DuPont cables because they could just so easily slide off or not make a good connection you know in future years so that's all done so that's that's been threaded through the door here and coming out the other side where you saw the previous DuPont cable so that's got to go in there one hopes um, yeah and if that happens then I should better put a power source on the other end and all should be well hmm let's have a go right I've dragged my power supply up here got the multimeter here which um, you can't see so I'm gonna put that down here okay I've got it sort of balanced at the moment at the risk of shorting everything else out right let's try this so I'm gonna I've shut the door I'm now gonna lock it watch just watch the um, multimeter oh yes oh relief so there we are so when I lock my shed door my workshop door sorry um, well I can do something with that signal now mainly to say you idiot you've left the power on again hmm okay oh that's good that's good I like that right all I've got to do is um finish off this this wiring that's coming out of the wall here then I've got to bring that to some kind of termination box I guess something anyway I'm not sure yet it doesn't matter this is the tricky bit getting all the hardware sources and I've locked myself in and that just about brings us to the end of the project really that um, signal I've sent into an Arduino Uno which basically says if the digital pin X is low bleep the bleeper um, I'll, I'll show you a quick demo just at the end of the video but basically that's it so now I did say originally that AT tiny 85 at the back there could form part of this project or this Wemos D1 could hmm well in fact let's think about this if it's going to be a simple bleeper as it is at the moment I'm not going to um, donate an entire Arduino board for that but I would be prepared to donate a little AT tiny 85 because all it wants is one digital input for the lock and one digital output for the bleeper and then power and that's it so three wires and we're done could do that now if I wanted to make it a little bit more sophisticated in other words over engineered um, I could use some kind of Wemos board D1 something with an, an ESP8266 that uh, could not just bleep but send me an email or a text or something but it just sounds a little bit yeah I think the AT tiny 85 is the route to go myself yeah okay well let me um let me draw out and a little so we haven't done a diagram for a while have we yeah I'll draw it on a board exactly what this looks like for the Arduino because it's literally child's play the hard part was getting all that hardware in place and tested oh and you see that tiny bit of drill there yeah I managed to break the drill as I drilled my final hole because if you remember I said it was curved well the, the drill shot through that other side hit the curve and then snap so yeah a casualty of war luckily I have some spares so this is a quick diagram of what the sharp device looks like it's got five pins on that u-shaped device three four and five are from the photo receptor and one and two of the LED now you notice there on the left I've said 1.4 volts max at 7 to 9 milliamps so that means change that resistor or select that resistor according to what voltage you're putting in there because it's all the same voltage on that little micro mini board thing that it comes with because as it says up there look it says 4.4 volts to 5 uh, to 17 volts which is quite a bit isn't it okay um, here's the connection then that I've used three pins are coming out signal ground and VCC into the Arduino the Arduino detects whether the GPIO pin is high or low low means oh somebody's locked the door and if I'm still running set the alarm 
basically. Simple as that. I mean, it's just there's not a lot to it, to be quite honest. Right, let me show you the demo of the device as it is now with the Arduino, and uh, then we'll see where I got this from. So the server was running out of that hole. I haven't done anything with that yet. Runs up the top of my bench, goes into this little Uno here. Three pins, basically, plus 3.3 volts ground and one digital pin at the back. So behind that hole, there's the, uh, the sensor. That's as far as I can get round. It says minimum voltage of something like 4.6. It was on that data sheet. But anyway, 3.3 seems to work okay. Okay, let's have a, another test. Right, so the Arduino is all plugged in, and if I turn the lock, we can just see in the corner of your picture there. <whistles> Off it goes. Simple, quite loud, I've got to admit. I certainly, you can certainly hear that outside the workshop very, very easily. <whistles> Enough already. Right, so this is where I bought it from, a UK firm, as it happens, Protopic, because, uh, well, it's one of the few places I could find that could send it to me pretty quickly. And the price, as you see there, is £2.45. It comes in that kit form, as I showed you. So that's the resistor, the little board. That was the important bit, the board, really. Although, as it happens, it probably wasn't critical to this project, was it? Um, but anyway, um, OK, there's a data sheet and whatnot. But that's two forty-five. Now, I thought, OK, if I hadn't been in such a rush to do this, and the reason I was in a rush, because I forgot to turn the power off again the other day, you know, it is, you just got so many things on your mind. I had to go to the dentist, actually. So I told Alexa to turn off the lights. All went dim. I assumed everything was okay. Locked the door, went, came back. I don't know, an hour and a half later. And, of course, the workshop was still humming with music and everything else. It's just, oh, I thought, no, this has got to stop. Hence, the UK supplier. You can get something very similar from China. be interesting to see the price difference actually I don't think it's that huge £2.45 this one and remember I had to chop it up but it does contain a sharp um, a sharp photo sensitive receiver which we'll have a look at in a sec and this is the data sheet for it as I say it's a sharp GP1A578RJ00F makes you wonder how they make up these names isn't it anyway um yeah, so there it is. Let's, oh, we wanted to check to see what uh, light was being output. Let's have a look. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Right, it's an infrared light. Um, right down the bottom it says, degradation, it says. Mm. The emission of the infrared used in photocouplers will degrade over time. Joy. Uh, a 50% degradation over five years. Well, I'll tell you what, in five years, please put a comment on the bottom of this video asking me if it's still working or not. Or indeed if I'm still here. I don't mean alive, I mean in this actual workshop. Well, or alive when it comes to that. Anyway, so it is infrared. Fine. Now, I said there was a Chinese alternative. So I found this one on Banggood. Um, this is an optical end stop limit switch sensor basically it's the same thing now this is often used in 3d printers and uh, well let's have a look for more pictures Here we are there's one picture that's that's terribly misaligned isn't it that one the um the slot obviously is here i couldn't have chopped this one up though because you know all these other components are on here yeah i mean it's pretty much the same frankly three wires vcc ground signal exactly the same as the other one Oh, but it does come with a nice cable. Hmm. What was the price? $1.98. What's that in pounds? Let's have a quick look. It is $1.55 compared to the $2.45 for the UK supply. Hmm. Not a lot in it, really, is there? Now, just before we end, yes, I did notice as we were doing that final test, I kept saying Arduino Uno, didn't I? But in fact, it was a Nano plugged into a development board, which makes it the same size as an Uno, but it was in fact a Nano. It wasn't even a standard Nano either. It wasn't a 38, 328p chip. It was in fact a 168 chip. So I might, in fact, I might donate that to the project rather than the AT Tiny 85 because it's programmed, it's done, if I leave it as a simple beeper. It doesn't matter. The point is it's simple, easy, 
the hardware involved in doing this project is pennies really but the the safety aspect and the money in saving my heater being on all that time and soldering irons and good knows what else it's it's got to be worthwhile doing hasn't it there are just shows what you can do with a simple little bit of a, a microcontroller and three wires amazing really anyway great i hope you like this video it was a practical project this time no code to speak of if you really want to see it, I'll put the I'll put the sketch up, but it's literally a nothing sketch. But you're welcome to have a look, and um, I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Leave your comments down below, and thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.